Hello and welcome to another Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at Atraxa, Praetor's Voice as our commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And there's a lot of different ways we can build around Atraxa. We can build it in a poison deck where we try to proliferate the poison counters to win the game. We could play it in a deck where we've got a bunch of creatures with plus one plus one counters. Instead, I decided to play it in a super friends deck alongside a whole bunch of planeswalkers whose loyalty counters we can then also proliferate. So that's what we're working with. Atraxa also just a very individually powerful card. 4-4, four, four, Flying Vigilance, Death Touch and Life Link can help us against aggro as well. And then uh, taking a look at the deck, I've split it up into a few different categories, starting with our all-purpose interaction, ways to maybe counter opposing spells, remove creatures, we've got a couple sweepers in there too. Then we've got a pretty big section dedicated to mana acceleration, since we are trying to cast some expensive spells, we'll also need a bit of mana fixing, trying to play a four-color deck. And then we've got another big section dedicated to all the planeswalkers in the deck, of which we have many. And then uh, last but not least, we've got a fun section with cards that interact quite well with planeswalkers, ways to maybe double or loyalty counters right away, or activate planeswalkers twice in one turn. And then we've got our mana base, which now also gets to play with the various fetch lands from Cans of Tarkir, making a four color mana base more consistent than ever before. So now for the deep dive, starting with our interaction, we've got some one mana removal, source to plowshares, Fatal Push in black can also enable Revolt now pretty easily with all the fetch lands. And then we've got Get Lost in White to deal with creatures, enchantments or planeswalkers. We've got a few counter spells with the Wash Away for opposing commanders. And then I'm playing a Memory Lapse over the double blue counter spell, just because the mana can be a little bit difficult to have double blue early. And then a Dovin's Veto can counter non-creature spells and is uncounterable. Then we also have Brainstorm to synergize with our various shuffle effects like the fetch lands, so we can get a nice bit of card selection and dig towards whatever we're missing. Then we've got a few sweepers as well. Cyclonic Rift, when overloaded, can bounce everything back. And so does a Reverse Rebuke at 6 mana. And then we've got the more traditional sweepers to deal with creatures, like Supreme Verdict, destroying them, Sunfall exiling them, and leaving us with an Incubator token. And then Farewell can also exile creatures, but can also hit enchantments, graveyards, and artifacts. And that's especially powerful in a Super Friends deck, where we're mostly interested in protecting our Planeswalkers, while we can exile everything else. And then Casualties of War can also hit multiple card types and can potentially be a nice 5 for 1 if everything lines up. And then we continue with our mana acceleration where we have Dark Ritual, not used to ramp out Atraxa since Triple Black doesn't really help cast it, but can be very nice if we can play out a Planeswalker ahead of schedule with it. Then we've got some one mana creatures, Avacyn's Pilgrim, Halfling, can also kind of fix our colors for various legendary spells. And then we've got Mystic and Lanor Elves, still worth it. And then we can also ramp with Explorer and our Grow Spiral, putting an extra land in play. And then at three mana there's Uro, which also draws a card and can be escaped later in the game. We've got Into the North with our Snow Covered Basics. And then we've got a few ramp artifacts that can also make colored mana, Arcane Signet and Cold Steel Heart. Then at three mana there's Cultivate, finding two basics. We've got Black Market Connections, which can generate treasure tokens, among other things, can also draw and maybe make a shapeshifter, and we can offset the life loss with a lifelink on Atraxa. And then a Kiora could also go into Planeswalker section, but it also helps us ramp by untapping our various permanents, like our lanes early on, and then can also draw a card when Atraxa enters. We've got a Replicating Ring, whose counters we can also proliferate with Atraxa. That way we speed up the process of getting the eight Replicated Ring tokens, which will also net us a ton of extra mana. And then a Staff of Completion is perfect here, as we can draw extra cards with it at the cost of a bit of life, which Atraxa can offset, but we can also tap it to proliferate if we'd like, so that can be very powerful with active planeswalkers and then can also make mana by paying one life and then we've got the Celestus for a bit of card selection as it switches between day and night. And then one of my favorite cards, Mirari's Wake, to double the mana produced by our lanes, giving our team plus one plus one. And finally, Astral Cornucopia also has awesome synergy with Atraxa, because whenever we proliferate we can put an extra charge counter on it, and in return it will make even more mana. Then we get to the Planeswalkers, starting with Narset, which can deny opposing card draw and can help find non-creature spells. And if we proliferate, we can activate the minus two multiple times. And then the Wandering Emperor gives us removal, can also start proliferating the plus one counters we put on our samurai and other creatures. We've got Taimyo Field Researcher, and if we quickly reach the ultimate here with a minus seven, we get an Omniscience-like effect, which can be game-ending. Then a Jason Reveler of Secrets can bounce creatures back and draw cards. 
The fairy temporal pilgrim mostly drawing cards, but can also build up a spirit token whose plus one counters we then also get to proliferate. Nissa Vital Force can get stuff back from our graveyard or turn a land into a 5-5. And then we can also quickly make an emblem where we get to draw whenever our land enters, also quite synergistic with the fetch lands. Then a Nissa, also kind of a ramp card, but we don't have a ton of forests in the deck necessarily to double their mana, but still very powerful since we also get to proliferate the plus one counters that we put on our lands. Then there's the Fairy here of the Monaria drawing cards. The minus three can also give us a bit of interaction, and sometimes we can immediately minus eight when we play it if we have a doubling effect in play so we can get that emblem to start exiling the opponent's stuff. Kaya, another powerful planeswalker at 5 mana, giving us interaction with a minus 3, and then a form of card advantage with a plus 1. Same with Ashok Nightmare Muse, making the nightmare tokens and interacting with a minus 3. And then a Tamiyo Completed Sage can also quickly reach an ultimate to make Tamiyo's Notebook to draw an extra card each turn and give our spells a discount. The Eternal Wanderer, also another sweeper effect with a minus 4 that can keep Atraxa in play, and then can make Double Striking Samurai. We've got a Liliana Dreadhorde General, which can also deal with a bunch of creatures with a minus four, or make an army of zombie tokens with a plus one, while eventually building up towards an ultimate, which can also be game ending. Vraska, another way of proliferating all our planeswalkers while drawing cards, and then the ultimate can also win us the game, especially if we then still have an Atraxa in play to proliferate the tenth poison counter. And then a Relic Seeker, just another powerful planeswalker that can generate pirate tokens or destroy opposing permanents. Got a Johnny Unyielding, which can find more Planeswalkers with a plus two, and then a minus two gives us more creature removal, and the ultimate can also build up a bunch of loyalty at once. And then the Intangible Slayer gives us a bit more card draw with a zero ability, can drain the opponents, and also a nice answer to powerful creatures that have ETB effects. And then we get to the fun section, which are cards that interact quite well with our Planeswalkers, such as Evolution Sage, proliferating whenever our land enters, so that can also be incredibly powerful with the new fetch lands. We've got Broker's Ascendancy, giving us plus one counters each turn, as well as loyalty counters on all our Planeswalkers, so that can also stack quite nicely with Atraxa. Just make sure to get to plus one counters first, and then proliferate them, so we end up with a 6-6 Atraxa after just a single turn. We've got Spark Double so we can double up on one of our Planeswalkers. It's no longer legendary, so we can have two of them in play at the same time. We can also sometimes copy Atraxa, and then two Atraxas are also quite strong, since we get to immediately proliferate the plus one counter we get. Then there's Conquer's Death, which is more interaction, so it could also go in the first category, but can also eventually get a Planeswalker back from the graveyard with an extra loyalty counter. Good Urza assembles the Titans to find an extra Planeswalker on Chapter 1, can also read ahead to Chapter 2 and immediately cheat a Planeswalker into play. And on the final chapter we get to activate loyalty abilities of our Planeswalkers twice, so ideally we already have a few Planeswalkers in play, making use of the second chapter, and then all of a sudden we get to pull ahead, maybe plus a Planeswalker and then ultimate it right after. And then we've got Time Warp to take an extra turn, which also becomes exponentially more powerful the more Planeswalkers we have in play, since we get to activate them multiple times and build up an ultimate, and it can also be quite strong with an Atraxa in play then. The doubling season lets us double all the loyalty counters on our Planeswalkers when they enter the battlefield, so we can potentially immediately ultimate one of them, like a Liliana Dreadhorde General or a Teferi can be particularly deadly if we manage to pull those off, and then can also just double the plus one counters we get. We've got Oath of Teferi, which also lets us activate Planeswalkers twice each turn and flicker something when it enters the battlefield. And finally, Vorinclex, another way of doubling our loyalty counters and plus one counters while having the opponents. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward. We've got a few snow-covered basics to search up. Don't have too many search effects other than the fetch lands, but the fetch lands are usually interested in getting the various trial lands and triomes here, of which we have four. And then we've got uh, shock lands, all of them in our colors. And then we've got a few more dual lands to round out the mana base. Got the Innistrad dual lands, one in each color combination. The check lands are also quite strong now with all the trial lands and shock lands and fetch lands that can help find the various basic land types. We've got all the pathways in our colors, and then we also have the command tower, and that pretty much wraps it up. So yeah, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Tatiova, blue green landfall. And uh, yeah, we've got some landfall of our own here with Into the North and Uro. So the upside of Into the North is that we put an extra card in Graveyard for Uro, as opposed to playing Cold Steel Heart. 
and should also be harder for the opponent to interact with. So let's go with that. I do want to prioritize blue and green mana for the escape. And then next turn we could play Atraxa. I do need to play this on black if I want to do that. Sure. And then next turn either Kaya or Teferi. Opponent has the counterspell. Let's go with Teferi here and just uh, draw a card for now. Much the past can teach us. Grazer, opponent waiting on Tatiova until they can get immediate value. So they might be keeping up another counter spell too. Distractions. So probably start by drawing. And then we could play Kaya, 5 mana Kaya that is. If I go for Uro, then put a land in, play a land, 4 mana left, still plays Cold Steel Heart, or maybe we draw into something relevant. Yeah, I guess I don't mind that if they're gonna have a counter spell here. This can name green. Okay. So we've got a Teferi on 7 loyalty. Still a long way to go if we want an ultimate. But uh, that's not necessarily the goal. There's Tatiova. So if we can take that out with our intangible Slayer, we could have a Tatiova of our own. I guess you're not joking around. So we'll give it a shot. Don't want to play a land yet, even though there could be a conditional counter spell in our future. That resolved. And explore is pretty sweet too here. Ooh, doubling season could allow us to maybe ultimate a planeswalker right away. And the fairy's also getting up there. Alright, River's Rebuke, that's fair. But now let's see if we doubling season. I have five mana left, so yeah, we can immediately ultimate a Teferi Hero of Dominaria, for instance. Which should be pretty good, just double checking that there's no better options, but don't think so. So now whenever we draw, we get to exile a permanent. And that's going to be enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Ashok, a Dream Render, so perhaps a mill deck. And uh, Ashok also shuts down our fetch land, so that could be pretty effective. Our hand has Wash Away, which could be an answer to Ashok, if we care about it. Uh, the rest of my hands... Could be okay if we find a third land for connections and cornucopia. So I'll try it. And then I'll start out by just fetching a tri land that includes blue. A blue green. Okay, opponent's got to turn one rune cramp, so they're serious about milling. So blue green, and then don't really need double black, but uh, sure. 
Okay, so just uh, tap land and pass. And then we can play Cornucopia, which keeps up Wash Away for Ashiok. One's going to pass, maybe keeping up their own interaction. Okay, in that case, we'll try Black Market Connections. Don't want to tap out for a Truxa, I don't think. When it can easily get uh, removed or countered. That resolved. So possible they just have creature removal in hand. Mind Spike. Okay, can't uh, stop that. So they could take the wash away and then resolve Ashiok. Ashiok exiling my graveyard also pretty effective against Tamyo using the minus ability. Goes for a river's rebuke instead. And a fraying sanity. Alright, that's gonna double the mill. For now, I guess we could also make a shapeshifter. Although I might actually want to Supreme Verdict the Crab. So, yeah, let's um, Verdict just for the Crab. And then keep up Wash Away. And then we'll need to try and apply a bit of pressure here. Since the Fraying Sanity can be quite deadly. Opponent counters back with an offer you can't refuse. Alright. So, Ashiok resolves. It's gonna essentially mill 8 cards with the Fraying Sanity. We could flash in a Wandering Emperor. And then make a Samurai to start pressuring Ashiok. Can't quite finish it off, but it's something... And I'll go for all three modes now. Okay, so now I could potentially use Tamyo to get back a Jace. Don't know if that's what we really need here. Can just go for Atraxa, which also proliferates onto the Cornucopia. Get an extra plus one counter. And then we can still grow Spiral. And we may as well play the Pilgrim. Okay. 65 cards remain. Mesmeric Orb. Uh oh. That's uh, quite scary alongside a Fraying Sanity. So I'm not going to want to tap too many more of my permanents. At least Atraxa and the Samurai have Vigilance. And with Cornucopia we can make a lot of mana just by tapping one card. Goffney mill for 8, which is basically 16. Yeah, the doubling from Sanity here is gonna... potentially get it done. There's a few cards that can mill half of our library, so... combined with Fraying Sanity that would be lethal. For now, do I even want to draw with connections is a question. We could still find answers to their artifact and enchantments, so... I think I do. Probably don't need the shapeshifter anymore. Okay. So, what's next? I can... plus on... Let's say... Atraxa. What can Tamyo do for me? 
eventually get back a Vraska, which can destroy their stuff. Could also go for Nightmare Muse. Can't quite go for Vorinclex. Yeah, I guess just getting Ashiok might be worth it, just to bounce the Fraying Sanity right now. And then I want to tap the Cornucopia. Might have wanted to sank the treasure too, perhaps. Just attack with the Vigilant creatures, and then we might still have a two-turn clock. And then I'm not even gonna play to Fairy, I don't think. So they've got 5 mana, replace Fring Sanity. And foretells a card, and yeah, her opponent is dead on board now. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a red-green landfall deck with a World Sculptor. So finding a sweeper for all the plans might be necessary. Our current hand's not bad though, we've got a Spiral to try and get a Nissa in play early, give us more mana. The Fairy plus Spark Double is also pretty nice. But we might need to find a Sweeper to eventually stabilize. Lotus Cobra also quite powerful. They could have played Cobra, played a land to immediately trigger it, but kind of implies that they don't have another one or two mana card they want to play. Okay, fetch land. Can fetch up a tri land now. Needs to produce black mana, and ideally it's also forest for Nyssa. So, something like this. So now I can go for Antraxa, and then next turn play one of our Planeswalkers. At least having a big life-linking flyer can help uh, gain a bit of life back, even when facing the World Sculptor. Opponent's going to be running a lot of basic lanes to get more plant tokens. So they still have three mana left, but they're not going to use it. Okay, so Polluted Delta can get another Forest to combine with Nyssa. That seems worthwhile. So something like a Breeding Pool or, a, let's see, Overgrown Tomb could also work. And then for now, I don't need to untap an actual forest. Since I don't have a two mana spell I need to cast. Put on double blocks, that's surprising. But I'll take it. I guess they are scared about Atraxa proliferating onto the land and making it bigger. But yeah, Nissa close to an ultimate already. So let's see, how much mana are we working with? Seven, eight, nine. So we can play Jace. Lost. 
and then still play Spark Double. And then Double Atraxa also sounds pretty sweet here, actually. And let's just plus. Land is fine. Okay, get to hit for four. And then we get two proliferate triggers. So now we can maybe ultimate Jace and Nissa in the same turn. Got a few blockers for whatever opponent does next. All right, well, that could be pretty effective too. The minus seven giving their team a massive boost. Don't think it's necessarily lethal since we've got bunch of lifelink here and our opponent just goes face because uh, going after the planeswalkers is unlikely to work out so we're gaining seven up to 35 this is 29 so we could just take the rest and then now we've got a bunch of sweet options available Ultimate Nissa, Ultimate Jace, which will counter their first spell they play each turn. We can draw a bunch with Teferi, Ascendancy can go off, and that's going to be enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Galta, Stampede, Tyrant, so big green ramp deck. And uh, our hand's a little slow to get things going. I've got some 3 mana ramp. But only two lanes, so this could work out poorly. Alright, this I can try. I've got three lanes and a Kiora. And then a Farewell could be a way to maybe clean up some mana creatures. Explore's nice. So let's see, Chapel is untapped. And then I can fetch up another try land here. Stomper on three. And then we have preferences for color. I guess I would like black mana. And then we already have double white and extra blue. So blue, black, green. And then do we want Kiora before playing Atraxa, or do we just slam down Atraxa and then curve into Teferi? Yeah, that seems acceptable. Not sure if her opponent's packing a lot of fight effects or author removal. Expect it to be mostly ramp to get up to 8 mana, and then lots of powerful threats. Okay, so Truxa can attack. And then Teferi will simply draw. The entire multiverse is at stake. All right, memory lamps could be a way to maybe delay Galta. Stompers active and a natural growth means uh, we have to trade if we want to keep Teferi alive, which I guess we kind of do. And if I'm going to fare well to get rid of the enchantment and the creatures, then I may as well keep my planeswalker. <laughs> oh, you caught me this time. Now let's see here. So next turn Galta's incoming, so if we want to farewell we would be tapped out. So instead I might want to keep up memory lapse for a turn, and then we can develop our mana with Kiora and Celestus. The fairy could make a token to chump. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. Familiar face. And 
hope they tap out for Galta. Opponent just goes to attackers first. Now that we're in the second main, we could also let Galta resolve and then farewell everything. Skullspore Nexus, that's an artifact. I guess if we um, farewell, we just get rid of our own Celestis with it too. But I kind of want to keep farewell until after Galta. So, yeah, kind of a close call here whether I memory lapse or not. I don't think I do. And then I'll just fetch a tapped land. Okay, so Teferi's gonna draw. Finding a get lost, that's another flexible answer. So... What if we, a Johnny, can uh, get rid of the Cultivator so we don't have to worry about it? And then keep up Memory Lamps Get Lost. And since we exile, the Nexus also doesn't trigger. Pass it back. Vorinclex. Yeah, that's uh, pretty effective against our Super Friends deck. Could uh, just get lost, but that will leave behind a large token from Skullspore. So maybe it is just memory lapse for now. And then we plan for Vorinclex. Okay, so could spark double and try and double up on a certain planeswalker with a get lost as insurance and then a farewell to follow up. I feel pretty good about this. So yeah, maybe spark double and then double up on the fairy could be pretty good having two of them. Since they synergize with each other. And a time warp is perfect. So now we just get to go off. Take an extra turn. And draw a bunch more cards. So plus this one. And then uh, with the draw from Uro and... Uh, Potentially from Kiora, we could even get up to an ultimate with the other Teferi here. And then uh, we don't need to worry about their commander if we can just win the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Chatterfang. Our hand's quite poor, missing lands and just mana acceleration in general. This is still kind of clunky with lots of expensive cards, but at least the Cornucopia is pretty good with Atraxa. So we can start with Fabled Passage and get either a Swamp or a Forest. And then we can fetch a Triland, turn 3 Cornucopia, turn 4 Atraxa, which can hopefully proliferate, and then we're close to casting our 6 drops. Evolution Sage is good with our fetch lands, but uh, still want to get this Tapped Passage out of the way for now. And then, yeah, I'll get a forest. So Chatterfang is going to make lots of tokens. Squirrels, but also other tokens will synergize with it. Turn two greeters is nice. Okay, so now we could uh, just play a tapped watery grave, save Delta for Evolution Sage. Since I don't think we'll struggle with the mana fixing. Cryptolith Rite can also generate a bunch of extra mana. 
Okay, now we can play Cornucopia and Pilgrim. And then we're setting up for an Atraxa. Could possibly even cast one of our six mana cards, and yeah, the casualties looks pretty appealing here. And Bloodcaster is next. Okay, so yeah, I think casualties to stem the bleeding. Can destroy creature, artifacts, enchantments, and land. So creature will probably be Chatterfang, enchantments, cryptolithrites, and then Overgrown Tomb. So your opponents set back on mana quite a bit. They're still ahead on board with their creatures. But uh, hopefully that bought us some time. The minus four from Liliana not looking too great here. So the goal is maybe to just protect it and then work up towards an ultimate. Opponent goes digging for land. And they found it. Fatal push isn't bad. So I think I like Evolution Sage now, fetch, getting us more counters on the Cornucopia. And then we have white, uh, green or black, this can make any color. If we still want a Fatal Push too, then Cornucopia needs to make black, so we've got green, white, so I need to get blue. And I guess Island's okay here. Let's see. I think we'll still be fine to cast everything in hand. We've got double white. So if this makes black, we can cast Atraxa. And then still Fatal Push. I want to say Gala Greeters. And then we get to Proliferate once again. Cornucopia now making 4 mana. And then next turn we can deploy our Planeswalkers. And our Lord Skitter is apparently not good enough, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Naya Tokens deck. So finding a Sweeper is going to be pretty key, otherwise our opponent can kind of combo kill us the turn they play Jetmir. This hand's pretty bad since we don't have green for Pilgrim. Our lands are also mostly tapped since we don't have a basic land type. Okay, this is uh, probably better. Got to turn to either Signet or Explore. And then connections to hopefully draw into a sweeper eventually. And then our mana base is going to be quite strong. Opponent off to a great start with Mystic. Turn to Cultivate on the play. For now. I guess we'll explore. And this can fetch a tapped tri land. So your opponent's gonna start making tokens soon. Invasion's gonna have a look. Okay, that can disrupt us. And potentially save the team from a sweeper if they transform it. Doesn't get around exile or mass bounce effects. And our opponent took the Jace, so won't be casting that anytime soon. And an Archon. Alright, so they're really punishing our deck here. So I did not think to save the basic land. I did not really expect the Archon. So let's see. Get a Triome. So, can't double spell. So I guess it's just black market connections. Play a tap land. And now they can transform the invasion by attacking it. Adlin, pretty strong too. Alright, so it's not looking good for us here. Unless we can draw into a sweeper with the connections right now. And it has to be basically a sunfall. For us to be able to cast it. 
Not sure what happened to the opponent's invasion. Looks like they... Well, I guess, yeah, the Archon prevents them from casting a second spell, so they try to transform it, but fail to do so. Makes sense. Okay, so... If our opponent plays Jetmir next turn, are we dead? Maybe we get one more turn, especially with Atraxa as a blocker. So that's going to be my play, I think. And there's Jetmir. And then I can block the token, take 12. Alright, I guess uh, we're just going all out here looking for a sweeper. And a growth spiral is not it. If I cast it to draw, we can't cast a second spell. So I think we are pretty dead now. Jay's bouncing Adlin, does that save us? Seems unlikely. But I guess it's worth a shot. Because, yeah, Oath also doesn't really interact in any meaningful way. Atraxa can attack. Seems like our opponent might have another instant speed token maker in hand too. Which should certainly end things, nope. Opponent goes all out. Is this an Ember Cleave? A March of the Multitudes for X equals 8. Alright, so now their team gets double strike from uh, Jetmir, so yeah, we're super dead here. GG's. Yeah, that Archon was pretty effective. Good way to punish multicolor mana bases. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Braids, Arisen Nightmare, Black Sacrifice. Our hand is decent. We will need to get a Plains with Into the North, and then we still need an extra white mana to cast Verdict and Urza Assembles. So our mana is a little shaky to start out. Also need a second blue for Jace. But uh, got a lot of dual lands we can draw. Like Watery Grave, so that unlocks Jace for next turn. And then for now we could play Atraxa if we'd like. Sure. Alternative was keeping Get Loss available for Braids. Don't expect Atraxa to necessarily survive, but if our opponent goes for Braids, that's fine. Can attack back for four. Jace can bounce Braids. Since we cannot Urza assembles here. And drawing is also reasonable. But I kind of like interacting with the board. And then next turn we can go digging. Xander's Wake. Can get all sorts of stuff. And uh, yeah, could just let Jace take two, can block, and then they get to trigger Xander's Wake. And they can also use the Scion token for mana. I think this is fine. They might have a sacrifice spell anyways to sag the Thrall before damage. A lonely end. 
shrinking down Atraxa. And then a not dead after all on the Thrall. Okay. That's fair. Send it back to the command zone for now. So they get a bunch of triggers. Thrall's back. Scion token. And a Xander's Wake triggered. Did find our second white source. So Supreme Verdict is now an option too. Jace maybe just draws for now. If I bounce Thrall, I guess they don't get the Scion token, but doesn't seem needed. Think fast. And a Memory Lapse is okay. If we Verdict, we can still keep it in hand. So sure. Could also tear asunder the Xander's Wake. Does this trigger only in their turn? Yeah, I guess we could just tear asunder the Xander's Wake and then Verdict. Their opponent's left with a Scion token. And a Reckon Raid, which they might sacrifice to Braids. No, nope, goes for the Scion token. Ooh, Mirari's Wake is exciting. So let's draw. Broker's Ascendancy, probably not at its best right now. Sunfall could also be an answer to Braids. But what if we Mirari's Wake, and then I get to keep up both Get Lost and Memory Lapse. And then next turn have access to a ton of mana, and that's already enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Itali Primal Conquer. Having a one mana counter spell's nice. Can maybe counter some ramp with Veto. Don't have any of our own ramp cards to try and get Mirari's Wake down, but uh, we'll give it a shot. And then we can start by fetching a Tri-Land. Just need to make sure it can help cast Dovin's Veto. Putin does have the turn one Mystic. So blue, black, white I guess is good. And then we'll just play another fetch land. And see if we need to veto anything. Harrow? That's a pretty good one to counter as our opponent just sacrificed a land. So I need blue or white. And then does the second color matter? Probably not. So I'll just get a basic. Island is fine. And that's enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Azusa, lost but seeking. Feels like this is going to be a pretty tough matchup, as our opponent can kind of go over the top of what we're doing. But uh, our hand's keepable. Turn to explore, try and get an Urza Assembles going as soon as possible. And then a farewell to try and reset the board. And then Windswept Heath can get another Triome. Turn 1 Gilded Goose, can play turn 2 Azusa. And then I'm probably going to play Atraxa. Hope to draw land 5 for Urza Assembles. Opponent going for a Cobra first. And then what land do we want to get? So white, black, green seems okay. Alright, if we want to guarantee Urza assembles, I just go for Cold Steel Heart, keep up Veto, which uh, I don't mind. And 
and the skin name white. And then if we can find a second planeswalker to reveal on chapter one, we can have a couple nice turns set up. Azusa with an Evolving Wilds to trigger Cobra twice. And then they've got two land drops remaining. Can maybe counter a ramp spell here. Yeah, that's a good one to counter. Would have gotten three forests, which is pretty good with Azusa, as they just need to keep uh, hitting their land drops. Lotus Field sacking two lanes. And then they still have one land drop left, I believe. Now if I draw a land, we could also fare well. Although I think I still prefer Urza Assembles. That's no Planeswalker, don't really want to draw any of these. And the Blind Reveal finds a Reverse Rebuke, not the best. Alright, so it's just going to be Teferi, which we can put in play for free next turn. If our opponent casts some big creature, then Farewell. Exiling all creatures might be the move. And then we're not forced to proliferate on our Saga, since I would miss out on the third chapter that way. Primal Commands, okay. Kind of don't mind them shuffling my deck, since I didn't want to necessarily draw the River's Rebuke. And they get to search for a creature and put it in hand. I'm not entirely sure what they're going to get. Excavator, I guess, is pretty good with various fetch lines. <laughs> we redrew the same Dovin's Veto. Alright, so Teferi's going to draw. And then maybe we wait for them to play Excavator before we fare well. Although then they do get to kind of go off with Azusa and Lotus Cobra. And then if we exile the Graveyards, Excavator also doesn't look very good anymore. Okay. Next turn we get to activate the Fairy twice. Ideally, top deck another Planeswalker that we can activate twice right away. For now, just a Visionary, and there's an Ashiok. Perfect. But I can draw first, in case I find an even better Planeswalker to play. Narset's not bad. Although it doesn't really benefit too much from the extra ability. And uh, yeah, let's go for Ashiok. Can just plus twice to get up to an ultimate. Although it's not like I'm gonna necessarily want a minus seven right away. Yeah, I think I still like plusing here. What does Bouncing Visionary do for me? Prevents him from maybe getting a line back with Excavator. Now let's just plus. And then next turn I could attack with my Nightmares. And then maybe set up a minus seven. Tracker plus fetch lanes make a bunch of clues. Definitely have fond memories of playing this in various formats. Has fallen out of favor a little bit. Okay, so the Nightmares can start by attacking. Could also Rivers Rebuke here. Better opponent does get to activate the Visionary. I guess her opponent does have quite a few face up cards in exile. Does Ashok care what type of card is in exile? I guess they don't, so we get to cast whatever we want. And uh, I guess that's enough for a concession. Can have another quick peek here. Did not exile any huge creatures, but a uh, free primal command's not bad. Symbiosis could maybe find a creature. 
So maybe we just wait another turn and then try to exile some large old Razi that we get to cast for free and take over that way. But uh, yeah, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a pretty slow and clunky hand with two tapped lands, no basic land types. Take a mulligan. Okay, this is a little bit better. Could Dark Ritual out a Celestis on turn one? Doesn't seem all that exciting. So I'll just get a Tri-Land instead, something that makes green and black. And then I guess white. Up against Zergo and Ojutai. Okay, so now with the Dark Ritual for mana, could play Celestus and play Mystic. Or we can just play Mystic and then next turn run out. I guess Urza Assembles needs more white mana. Yeah, actually don't hate the Celestus Mystic line. And then next turn with a land we can cast Urza Assembles. If not, Cultivate is still an option or Atraxa. And if our opponent passes without doing anything, we get to loot with a Celestus. Giving us another chance at a land. Fairy Mastermind, I see. So we're gonna try and punish our card draw here. Do we care? Yeah, we sort of do. So I'll decline. Found the land, so Urza Assembles put in Ashiok. And then we can minus Bouncing the Mastermind. Or we could make a token, even though they get to pressure Ashiok with the Mastermind. Could also start from chapter 1 and maybe find a Planeswalker. And then we can put Ashok in play for free next turn. Yeah, that's maybe better. No Planeswalker, Oath of Teferi. Would be better if we had more Planeswalkers to begin with. Could keep a Swords as an answer to the Mastermind, but uh, let's just bottom everything and see if we get lucky. We do not. Uro, also not the best with a Mastermind in play. Well, nevertheless, we can uh, try and cheat in an Ashiok and then still cast Atraxa. Not going to want to proliferate the Saga, since we would miss out on the final chapter. And then I'm just going to plus play Atraxa and uh, hope we can hold off Zergon Ochutai here. Swords to Plowshares is painful. Nice one mana answer. And a Strike It Rich. So they're setting up for next turn here. So for now the plan's gonna be to attack with a nightmare and then maybe just make two more. Could also just draw a card now since we might want to play Uro and the Mastermind's gonna trigger anyways. Find Vraska. Okay, so Let's maybe get rid of Uro, and then if I draw a land for turn, we can cast Vraska, activate it twice, which would be pretty epic. Alright, just Anissa, still pretty good. And our opponent could of course also have a counterspell in hand, but we'll start here. And then I'm probably just gonna plus again. And see if Nissa resolves. It does. So we get to plus twice. Breeding Pool will make two mana for us. 
hesitant to also animate the triome if our opponent's got a sweeper, but I would like to cast a cultivate here. I'll just go for island. And then we could try to attack with our vigil on lands first. Opponent going for snapcaster swords. On the breeding pool, we'll float some mana response. Okay, so I still get to cultivate. But I have to cast it before attacking. Be wary of the ground to walk on. Okay. And then probably safe to attack with a nightmare. Opponent will get to connect with the Zergon Ojutai if they want to. But we've got two Planeswalkers close to an ultimate now. Also getting close to escaping Uro. A Viper bounces Nissa, so no Zergon Ojutai this turn. And a Lorien Revealed, gonna Island Cycle. Okay, so next turn could try Atraxa, could replay Nissa. Nothing I really want to take out with Vraska at the moment. Solve the equation, okay. I guess we'll see what they search up. Could be a River's Rebuke, perhaps, yep. At least it doesn't bounce or land. But now all the more reason to minus Ashiok, as opposed to making more Nightmares. So, step one, attack. Potentially after playing Nissa. So I don't necessarily want to bounce the Snapcaster. But we can bounce the Mastermind, maybe. Rise, my elemental friend. Odon takes it all. So if they reverse rebuke, we'll be left with our two lanes. So Mastermind in hand, a Viper in exile, Strike at Rich in the graveyard. And we're gonna play Viper to maybe jump with or double block. Arcane Signet is a draw. Okay, so we can develop our mana with uh, Celestus into Elvish Mystic. And then I'm fine if they double block, I think. They might double block the forest. Can even go Celestus into Signet, into Elvish Mystic. Bones at five. Now it's maybe their window to connect with the Zergon Ojutai. But they need to find some cheap interaction to keep up. They kept Zergon Ojutai on the battlefield. And now a Curse of Silence has a couple different things it could name. Goes for Ashiok. But now Vraska can be an answer to Zergo. Alright, so let's see here. If we just tap out for Vraska, take out Zergon Ojutai. That's pretty good. Can attack for three. If I play Nissa first, can maybe force him to jump with the Ornithopter of Paradise. But we're not presenting a lethal. Uro is also an option. So can't really go wrong here. I guess Vraska, take out Zurgo is the safest option. Put 
opponent falls to one, not even blocking the Mystic. And now a hasty land from Nyssa could be lethal. Skyclave can get rid of our land, can get rid of Raska, so it's Mystic or Celestis, goes for Mystic. Crucible making a pair of 1-1s, one so they've got the defenses on the ground now. But they can't really finish off Raska. So it's not looking great for the opponent. And Nissa can also get stuff back from the graveyard. Could be time to escape Uro. Uh, let's see here. If we Nissa animate a land, Vraska can minus. Can force him to double chump. I guess I don't really want to trade my island for a bunch of the opponent's stuff necessarily. But uh, yeah, again, can't really go too wrong. Let's maybe go for Uro. Can I Nissa and Uro have two forests? Yeah, I guess that's also an option. Okay, and then Vraska will just plus. So we're building up an army. And then next turn we might be able to attack all out. Alright, opponent might be throwing in the towel here. Good game. Awesome. So yeah, we got to see Atraxa in a variety of matchups. And certainly belongs in the Hell queue. We certainly face some powerful commanders as well. And uh, yeah, overall, seems like a very solid choice if you want to play a four-color deck in the Brawl queue, and especially if you enjoy Planeswalkers and these Super Friends style of decks. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.